In this video, we're going to take a look at the different ways to cache uh, simulations with thinking particles. There's generally two different methods. There is the master dynamic. Uh, it's got a recorder section here where we can cache to a one main file. And this will cache everything, the entire rule tree at once. Um, and the other method is caching dynamic sets, where we can right click on the, this little D icon and we can get a menu here where we can actually um, specify a file name and cache just this uh, dynamic set and any of his children. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look first at our setup. We've got some particles being born on a plane up here. There's a color map, a gradient ramp on that material, and it's being passed off into their color channel. There's data channel on these guys. Then next step, they're going to be um, kind of simulating some gravity using a force operator. And it comes into a U deflection, so they hit this ground plane. And then there's a particle collision using P-pass AB and repulsion bounce. It's not an actual shape collision, it's just kind of a particle distance uh, collision. It's very fast. And you can see how those particles get pushed out there. And then there's also a drag using a friction operator. And this will just kind of slow them down um, and not have them go off forever. Okay, so pretty simple there. And what we're going to do is go ahead and come up to our master dynamic. And let's take a look. Uh, first, something I don't think we've mentioned before is the simulation start. Uh, this will determine when TP actually starts processing. If it's set to animation, it's going to go ahead and use your current timeline. If it's set to user defined, it will uh, specify a certain frame when TP will begin to process. So you can see now it does not actually turn on and create any particles until frame 30. Uh, let's go ahead and switch that back to animation. Uh, before we look at the recorder menu, we want to talk about the viewport render subsampling. Uh, this is very important when it comes to caching because it's going to determine um, how fine the file is, or how large the file is and how fine the simulation is. The you can see we're set to per frame right now. That's a, that's a very low sample rate. Um, it's not going to work very well for shape collisions at all. Um, for particle interaction like this, P pass AB and repulsion bounce, it should be uh, kind of okay. It would be better with per half frame, so two samples per frame. Um, right now, our time setup, we're set to NTSC, so 30 frames per second. So per half frame would equate to 60 samples per second. Of course, per frame is 30 samples per second. Um, and then the next method we've got available is samples per second, where we can actually specify an arbitrary number. Um, we could do one sample per second, so extremely low. And But for things like shape collision, uh, with face accurate and maybe mesh deformation, um, you might want somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 or 120. Um, although it's not uncommon to also see things like 300, 600, or 1200. Uh, it all depends on how fast the objects are moving. Um, so just keep that in mind. But this, of course, increasing this number is going to correspond directly with how large the cache file size is. So also keep that in mind. For now, we're going to go ahead and specify per frame. and. What we've got underneath the viewport render subsampling is the render subsampling. Um, right now, what's happening is with viewport render subsampling set, but not render subsampling, is everything we see happening here in the viewport is going to be exactly the way it renders. So that what we see in the viewport, same in the render. Uh, if we turn on render subsampling, we can set up a different set of parameters. We could have it maybe sample instead of per frame, we could do 300 samples per second. So the render result may actually look different than what we see in the viewport. Obviously it's sampling at a much higher rate, uh, so the results can be different. Uh, this also comes into play when you uh, record to cache because there's two different methods. You can use the viewport settings or you can use the render settings. The render being this set of settings here, and viewport, of course, is this setting here. For now, we're going to go ahead and use the viewport. We're going to turn off this render subsampling. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got in the recorder here. Right now, we're set to simulate. This is actually going to have TP process all the rules and you know do the calculations for what we have. If we're set to play, then it's going to try to play this cache file. Uh, we don't have one specified yet, so that's not going to work. 
and it's just going to go ahead and simulate. But let's go ahead and switch back to simulate and let's go ahead and specify a cache file. We'll go ahead and we've got a directory on C drive called simcache. Just an easy place to remember. We'll call this test1 and you can see it's going to add a TPS on it. It's a TP simulation. Go ahead and hit save. Okay, so now our file appears here in this box telling us where it's going to be uh, saved. Uh, but it's telling us invalid file and none of this data information is available. That's because that's not been recorded yet. That'll show up later. Uh, the play offset we'll look at uh, after we record. This gives us the ability to tell the cache to start sooner or later. As well as uh, particle playback or playback particle exclude. That'll allow us to pick out certain particles and have them not render. Okay, and then almost to the end here we've got uh, redraw views. What this turned on means that we're actually, when we hit record, we will see the, the caching process and all the particles out here in the viewport doing their thing. Um, that could be good because if you turn that off and nothing is showing up but it's still recording the file, then you don't really know uh, what your simulation is looking like. Um, having it draw views uh, will take up a little bit of CPU processing, but um, you just have to balance whether or not it's worth it to see how the sim's progressing versus that extra bit of CPU that gets freed up when you don't use it. Okay, for now we're going to go ahead and leave it turned on. Uh, we're going to use the viewport sampling settings, which is per frame, and we'll go ahead and hit record. Put you on. Po uh, you can see down here at the bottom, it's telling us record simulation. We see a progress indicator, 65% done. And we can see the file size there, uh, 14, 15, 16 megabytes. So really small file size. It's slowing down a little bit because of the camera recording software, but it's almost done. Okay, so now it's finished. You can see it's automatically switched over to play, and it gives us information about the file name that we use to record that cache as well as the start and end frames, how many uh, samples per second, and uh, file size. So we go ahead and scrub back here. And now we can scrub uh, very easily because it's just reading information off the file. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually, we're going to switch back to simulate, and we want to take a look at what happens when we use per half frame. Remember we were we had a file size of 24 megabytes. Um, with twice as many samples, we're going to expect that to be twice as large. We'll go ahead and hit record. I'm going to put you on pause. Okay, almost done. And there it goes. We take a look and in fact it is twice as large. So the number of samples is definitely going to affect your your uh, cache file size. I'm sure that's not news to anybody. Okay.